Let's add in stereochemistry to our nomenclature roadmap for IUPAC nomenclature. So after we put the name together, we've got a name of a constitutional isomer of a compound, um, full IUPAC name, then we've got to add in stereochemistry if necessary. And so this video is going to focus on chiral centers, which we label with R and S. And so between two enantiomers, they'll be mirror images of one another, but we've got to be able to rank the groups attached to a chiral center one to four and then be able to label R and S for each of those. And so as we've looked at the two that we've got here, um, by definition, we have to put group four to the back. And so we're gonna um, break ties in a certain way, but let's look at these two first. If group four is away from us, as indicated by the dash here, anytime where groups one, two, and three go clockwise, a positive rotation there, one to two to three, we're gonna call that the R enantiomer. And then the mirror image, where four is still away from us, but we go counterclockwise, one to two to three, we're gonna call that the S um, enantiomer, um, if only one chiral center is present. If more than one chiral center is present, we have to worry about diastereomers um, instead of just enantiomers, but R and S would work the same way. So here are the rules for ranking those groups um, to designate R and S. The highest um, atomic weight of the atom directly attached. And if there's a tie, we list all attached atoms um, to those tied atoms in order and compare the best to best until a tie is broken. If we're still tied, we go one more level out on our best atom and then we repeat. Um, and let's look at a couple of examples to help um, deal with this. So let's not let the skeletal structure bother us here. Let's add in the H and it doesn't matter whether I add in the perspective going away one side or the other, it gives you the same answer because that's just your perspective of looking at it from a left hand lean or a right hand lean um, doesn't really affect the connectivity of the molecule. Well if we rank these, oxygen weighs 16, atomic or its atomic number um, is 8, um, but we can generally go by mass unless we have isotopes, in which case the heaviest isotope of a particular atomic number works. But technically we're going by atomic number. So oxygen first, um, then two carbon groups are next between this group and this group, directly attached to the chiral center, which is right here. And then the lightest um, atomic number is, is um, hydrogen with one. And so we have in that order. Well, we already have a broken tie. We have group one and group four already designated. We can go ahead and write those in, one and four. Um, but then between the two carbon groups, let's say between these two, we'll designate those by shapes. Well, the first carbon is attached to three hydrogens, so same group. The second carbon is attached to, at best, talking about right here, is attached to another carbon and two hydrogens. It's a CH2 group attached to another carbon looking out um, toward this carbon right here. So it's attached there, so it's a CH2. And then we compare best to best, so we wrote them in order for a reason, so that we can just say, okay, best to best, well, the group we've labeled um, with a square here gets a two, and then we give a three, the lowest ranked. Um, this one wins, this one loses, and then we have one, two, three, and four. Four is going away from us. We've got a counterclockwise one to two to three. So that is the S enantiomer um, as drawn. And what if we look at the example on the right? If we have multibonds, multibonds are a special case. Our chiral center here, again, is there. What's that chiral center attached to? It's attached to an oxygen, two carbons, and again, a hydrogen. We know the hydrogen is the fourth rank group, oxygen is the first rank group um, based on atomic weight, and then we have carbon versus carbon. So let's compare the two carbons that are next in line here. So the carbon of a multibond, multibonds um, count twice for double bonds, and they count three times for a triple bond. So that carbon we've labeled with a triangle, it technically is connected to two oxygens, one hydrogen because of that multi-bond. Okay? And if we look at the carbon label with a square, 
it's connected to two oxygens by single bonds and one hydrogen by a single bond. The hydrogen isn't drawn because of skeletal structure. And we've still got a tie. So if we look at our best to best here, best to best, we're still oxygen to oxygen, oxygen to oxygen, hydrogen to hydrogen. We're still tied. So we've got to pick our best atom in each group and go out one more time. So we're sitting right here and OH and OH, they're the same, so we'll just stick with those. So we'll look and see. Um, on the triangle side, that oxygen is considered to be back bonded because it's a double bond. It's bonded, the carbon's bonded to two oxygens, but the oxygen is back bonded there. So it's considered to be back bonded to a carbon. So we look out with one bond, we look back with one, a triple bond. This carbon is back bonded twice and out to hydrogen one time. Okay, so it's just a, a particular rule that we just have to learn um, that a double bond is back bonded as well. So that oxygen is only connected to one atom as an oxygen is normally. And then the oxygen um, on the square side there that we mark with the square is connected to hydrogen. So when we compare these two, we win with our oxygen. So we end up putting the two here and the three here, hydrogen still four. That's a one, two, three, H is pointed back, so we're good, one, two, three, going around. That is an R enantiomer, okay? But we learned two rules for how to deal with double bonds and tiebreakers there. So let's look now um, with perspective diagrams, three things that can happen. Then we'll look at Newman projections and then we'll look at um, Fisher projections, then we'll look at chair conformations with R and S. So you can speed ahead to whichever one of those you want to look at. But if H is back, it's no different than what we just did. There's group four. Or if, if group four is back, I should say, okay, four is back. Um, you know, make that distinction. It's not always going to be H there, so just make that distinction now. Group four rank is back. Chlorine's heaviest carbon to carbon beats carbon to hydrogen. That's a counterclockwise flow. That's an S. And then here, H is at us. So we're exactly the opposite that we should be. So group four, group one, group two, group three. It looks like it's S. But when H is at you, you take the opposite. And so this one's actually R. Because H is by definition pointed the wrong way. It's our perspective is opposite of what it should be. Now the other thing that can happen is group four is in the plane. And if that happens, you have to do what I'm about to show you. You can't just take the opposite or you're going to only get it right 50% of the time. Let's number these and rank them. So chlorine's one, carbon to carbon's two, carbon to hydrogen's three, and here's four. So we're, what we're going to do here is we're going to flip two groups in order to put four back. and we're going to take the opposite of what we get. So what I say here is this structure I'm about to draw is not the same as the original. And I'm going to draw this with the exact same perspective as the chiral center to the left and then I'm going to just put the group numbers there. So I'm flipping four and three. Why? Because three is back. I want four back instead. So I'm flipping four and three. So four goes, or three goes here, four goes here leave everything else the same. By definition of a stereo center, if I change two things, I get a stereoisomer. And so I just flipped R to S, but I made it easy to name. This thing looks, this thing is S here. This chiral center is S. It goes counterclockwise with group four back. However, our original is not the same as what we just did, so our original is R. And that works every time, even if four is at you. But with four at you, you can just take the opposite automatically. But with H in the plane, you're only going to get it right 50% of the time 
if you are just taking the opposite of what you get. You're essentially guessing because the perspective isn't lined up for, for you to correctly determine that. Okay, and you can do examples to prove that to yourself. Um, and you'll see that it's not the right perspective. 